Now, quantitative chemistry is more difficult with the new GCSE than it used to be. They expect you not to go from A to B, B to C, C to D, but to go straight from A to D without any help. It's really important that you understand exactly what you're doing. So let's have a look at a couple of things on the periodic table. So we have C, that's carbon. And we have those numbers next to it. So in a nucleus of an atom, we have protons and neutrons, and the bottom number is the number of protons. Not hashtag protons, millennials. That used to mean number. I'm trying to bring it back. We also call that atomic number. We're not so concerned with that one today. We're more concerned with this top one here. And you probably know that this is the number of protons plus neutrons in the nucleus. So if we have six protons, but we've got 12 things in the nucleus altogether, that means that we must have six neutrons as well. This has its own special name. Sometimes you hear this called the mass number. And the way I remember which way around they are is the mass number is the massive number out of the two. But the proper name for this is a relative atomic mass. So let's say that we have just a block of carbon. And let's say this block is 12 grams, it has a mass of 12 grams, an actual mass that we can weigh. Scientists ask the question then, how many atoms is that? And they did experiments to find out just how many atoms were in this 12 grams of carbon. And they found that it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That is a lot of atoms. That's 602 with another 21 zeros afterwards. That's an insanely big number. Now iron, it turns out, usually has 56 neutrons and protons in its nucleus. Its mass number is 56. When they got a block of iron that was 56 grams, how many atoms did they find that was? Lo and behold, it was exactly the same. So it turns out that the relative atomic mass number of atoms is actually pretty important and it's pretty special and we can do a lot with it. So it turned out that no matter what element you got, if you got as many grams as its relative atomic mass number, 16 grams of oxygen, four grams of helium, you name it, what did they find? Every single time the number of atoms in it was 6.02 times 10 to the 23. This is named after the guy who found it, Avogadro. And because it was always the same, it's called Avogadro's constant. So when we react chemicals, we can ask the question, well, how many atoms have we got there? How many atoms are we reacting? But of course, we can see that we're looking at some huge, huge numbers. So instead, what they decided to do was call this a mole. You know, like 12 is a dozen and a score is 20. Well, a mole of something is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of that something. And what do we know about that number? That if we have that many atoms of something, then it will have that mass in grams. The same idea extends to compounds as well. So let's say that we got some CO2. What does one mole of that way. Well, we know that it's the same number of molecules, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. But what are the relative atomic masses of these? Well, we saw that earlier carbon is 12, oxygen is 16. So what's the relative formula mass, as they call it, for carbon dioxide? Well, it's going to be 12 plus two lots of 16. It's going to be 32 plus 12, that's 44. The relative formula mass for carbon dioxide is 44. What does that mean? It means that one mole of this stuff of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44 grams. Now just be aware that you can get complicated ones. Let's take, let's take iron 3 hydroxide. Iron has a relative atomic mass of 56. Oxygen is 16 again. Hydrogen is top of the periodic table, so that's just one. So what is the total relative formula mass of this? It's going to be 56 plus three lots because this bracket indicates that we have that many of the number afterwards of whatever's in the bracket. So three lots of 16 plus one because you've only got one O and one H. So it's three lots of 17. So that gives us 107 again. What would one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of iron hydroxide give you? Well, it would be 107 grams. Now, some people say that relative atomic mass or relative formula mass doesn't have a unit because it's relative, but lots of things are relative and they have units. Relative atomic mass or formula mass, depending on whether it's just individual atoms or compounds, the number of grams per mole. So when you have helium, this mass number is four, this here 
is four grams per mole. And we can just shorten moles to M-O-L. It doesn't stand for molecule, that's moles. So that's what the big number next to elements represent. It tells you how many grams a mole, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles would weigh, as it were. Now, relative atomic mass can be shortened to R-A-M. Okay, that can be relative formula mass as well, but R-A-M is nice because it spells out RAM. So we said that RAM, relative atomic mass, is grams per mole. Now you should know that whenever you have a slash or per in a unit, that tells you how you calculate it. That slash represents a divide. So grams is mass divided by moles. But what's interesting is that you will very rarely have to do this calculation this way around. But if we rearrange it for moles, we end up with mass divided by RAM. And what is mass measured in? It's measured in grams. So actually we can think of moles being equals to grams over rams. That is the best way to remember how to calculate how many moles of something you've got. And take the number of grams that you have. Okay, it might be kilograms, it might be something else as well. And then you divide it by the rams, the relative atomic mass. This is the best thing to remember for quantitative chemistry. So I'm just gonna leave that up there. So let's see an example of this then, shall we? How many moles are in 120 grams of sodium hydroxide. All right, sodium hydroxide has the formula NaOH. Relative atomic masses of all these, sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, hydrogen is one. So what is this all together? Well, it's 23 plus 16 plus one. That gives us 40. That's the relative formula mass of sodium hydroxide. What did we say the unit of that was? Well, it's grams per mole. So one mole of this, sodium hydroxide would have a mass of 40 grams. So how many moles do we have? Let's go back to our little mnemonic up here. Moles equals grams over rams. So moles equals grams, 120, divided by rams, my relative atomic mass or formula mass, divide that by 40, don't need the unit there, and that gives us three moles. Easy, isn't it? All you have to do is remember this little trick up here, moles are grams over rams. Okay, so this is what it's all been leading up to. How do we use this idea of moles and rams and grams in chemical reactions? Now, this is the way a question will usually go. You'll be given a mass of a reactant and you have to find out how much mass of a product you're gonna end up with. Okay, it might be the other way around as well. It could be a product and you're finding out the mass of the reactant. In order to do this, we need to find out first moles of the reactant, then find out the moles of the product, and then turn that back into the mass of a product. If you remember this formula every single time, mass, moles, moles, mass, you'll be absolutely fine. So let's have a look at an example of a question. So we have this reaction going on here. So here we have iron three oxide reacting with carbon monoxide, and it's been balanced for us, so we have three CO, and that makes two lots of iron plus three lots of CO2. And the question is then, how much iron, that's mass, can be made from 300 tons of iron three oxide? And we've been given the relative atomic masses. We saw earlier that iron is 56, oxygen is 16. That's all we need to know, actually. We don't need to know carbon. Okay, so we have the mass of the reactant. We know that we have 300 tons of iron three oxide going in. All right, it's in tons, but actually it doesn't matter because if we have grams at the beginning, we have grams at the end. If we have tons at the beginning, we just end up with tons at the end. It's all relative. So here we go. Let's take the mass of our iron three oxide and find out the moles. So don't forget that moles equals grams over rams. Okay, that's gonna to be tons in this case, but the same thing still applies. So we need to know our relative atomic mass or relative formula mass in this case. So we got two lots of 56 plus three lots of 16 plus two Fe and three oxygens. And that gives us a relative formula mass of 160. Okay, so now that we've got our rams, as it were, we can find out the number of moles. So we do 300, like I said, we're using tons, doesn't matter, divided by 160. 
And that gives us to two decimal places, 1.88 moles. Okay, we know in reality that actually it isn't gonna be 1.88 moles because we're dealing with tons and not grams, but we're gonna end up with the right answer in the end, so it doesn't matter. Now, here's the thing. We now need to find out the number of moles of our product. Now, let's have a look at our equation here. The number in front of your chemicals actually give you the number of moles involved in the reaction. Again, it's all relative. We have three moles of carbon monoxide, one mole of iron three oxide. There's an invisible one there. So if you have one mole of that plus three moles of that, we make two moles of iron and three moles of carbon dioxide. It's just a ratio game from here on there. So this bit here involves ratios. So how many moles of iron three oxide do we have? We have 1.88. But have a look at the number of moles being made. We actually have twice as much iron being made as iron three oxide going in. So what do we do? We double the number of moles going in. So 1.88 moles, double it up because we know we need twice as many moles of iron being made compared to iron oxide going in. And that gives us 3.76 moles. All right, let's just have a quick check to see what we've done. We've been given the mass of the reactant. We figured out the moles of the reactant. We figured out the moles of the product. That's our 3.76 moles. All that's left to do is find out the mass of the product. And this is where you need to rearrange your moles equation. So moles equals grams over rams. But we now want to find grams. Okay, it's tons, but it's mass either way. So we want to get rams to the other side. So it's been divided by right now. So to get rid of it, we need to times on the other side. So moles times rams gives you grams. So that's our 3.76 moles times our relative atomic mass of iron, which is 56, which gives us to three significant figures, 211 tons. That's it, we figured out our last bit. So, so if you stick to the process each time, mass, then to moles, then to moles, then back to mass, you'll find that all questions on this are actually very similar. So once you get practicing, you'll get into it no problem. So I hope that helps you. If it does, then please leave a like. Maybe leave a comment down below suggesting what you'd like to see me do next. I'll see you next time.